unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Every man who came today, you are ordained to come. I got to a level of even asking God, don't bring somebody who is just coming to add up the number. Bring somebody who needs to hear this. And I'm going to tell you that everybody here, at the sound of my voice, you had to be here. And tonight you're going to thank God you came. I mean, you've attended meetings, but tonight you're going to thank God you came. And you're going to realize that there is something about people being available. After this meeting, you're going to know why some people have entertained and why some have come. Look at the faces around you, because it's important to remember them. In a few months from now, you will understand what I say. Hallelujah. When I was praying, I had a direction of speech and a way, a mind on how to address this. But um, my nature of ministry is unction. I'm an unction minister. Um, I not someone who pre-programs a sermon. Eh? It's very hard for me to sit one week meditating on something I'm going to share. But I'm not that kind of person because uh, sometimes in my spirit it limits the Holy Ghost. I'm not saying that it is the right thing for everyone to do because every man is given differently. You might do it and then mess up so badly <laughs> and regret why you did it. Eh? You, if you are an older person and you're a kind of teacher who writes notes and you feel that by writing notes you're going to deliver well, be blessed in whatever you do. Praise God. Because sometimes we lose the picture of, of, of the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives and sometimes we try to copy things and in the end we mess up so badly. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Be you. Tell your neighbor, be you. Um, I love being myself. I love walking in the shadows of me. Because God has made me a distinction, like he has made me a distinction. Praise God. And um, God knows, even if I get on that old town funeral on a Thursday, before thousands of people, and I don't have a message in my spirit, written in notes, he knows I'll trust him to receive a message. And he has never failed me. Never. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Every time I've opened my mouth, I'm the place where he filleth me with good things. I can start from one hand and end to another. That's why I can preach every day and a different message. There are things I repeat by unction because I need to repeat some of those things either to people who have not heard them or to when my spirit discerns that even though some people hear those things, they've not yet sunk in their spirit. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's also sad when some things have not sunk in a man, but then they assume that they have sunk because they've overheard it. Praise God. Um, but there are also sometimes I'll just get into a certain direction of ministry, and I don't know why or how, but I find that I'm taking a certain course. And some experiences are hard to explain to people because I hate, uh, I don't like so much uh, emphasizing an experience without the revelation of the same. I'd rather preach the revelation and the man has the experience. Because sometimes when we make experiences standards, sometimes we throw to the spirit of revelation. Sometimes. Um, if you remember Paul speaking, he says that I know uh, this is not my intention and mind of sharing some things, but let me boast a little. I know of a man who went to the third dimension of the spirit, so things which were not lawful to utter. Um, we, I have, I'm someone who has had many experiences in the spirit that if I start to count them, a normal Christian might either think I'm lying or might become jealous. 
<laughs> Praise God. I've had many experiences when I'm growing up in the things of God. I, the total sum of my ministry experiences. But if you know not my place in God, listen to the words I say. You'll know you can't just speak without an experience in God. This is not just things that fall in my head. You'll understand where I'm coming from to begin this way. These are not things that just fall in my head and my spirit. This is the total sum of my experiences with God. And um, there's a reason why Paul would write and write and sometimes not write many of his personal experiences. Because sometimes personal experiences are personal. And I might bring them out in a fora that might exalt me above measure and lose the very mind of the love that ought to edify men. Because sometimes surely knowledge can, it can puff up. I know too much to make me proud. Too much. Too much. I'm not boasting. That's the truth. If you've heard me preaching for five years, you're going to realize that I go upward and I'm better every year. I, I have known these things longer than many of you can assume and I was taught by God very early. I saw God very early. Uh, for me, I saw the total sum of things. I went to the end. And that's why I tell people that some ministers come back for you. They're not just walking the journey with you. <laughs> some of you might never understand it. It's not pride, it's the truth. Um, there, but there are special occasions of the Spirit. I'm going to share one of those. These are things that happen usual. But tonight, because of the nature of the ministry and the intensity of why, what is going to happen this evening, I'm going to share exactly what happened. This evening, this afternoon, I went for a wedding, officiated. I preached at the wedding of one of our pastors, Rohi. And then I came back and then I went to the office. I wanted to go home. The spirit forbade me, so I went to the office, and um, I went up in my office upstairs, and I, 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 I was just resting a bit, and I was carried into a trance, right, into an experience, and um, in that experience, I was preaching something I've never preached before. These things have happened many times. So there are many times when sometimes what I'm preaching, you understand, um, is, is something I've never touched or sometimes I enter meetings with the knowledge of how they will move because the spirit forwarded me to the experience of, of that preaching and teaching. Sometimes even the details of the sitting and the people who come I would know. That's why my own, no, when you don't attend a meeting, I can know. Because sometimes I carry those details that go that far. Uh, but in such an experience that I had this afternoon, I was carried uh, to a meeting. And um, I was preaching a certain message. And uh, after preaching that message, the service ended. In my spirit, I'll preach it one day. Then when the service ends, I wake up. And when I wake up, like I come out of that trance, my body, out of the shock of the meeting, I also wake up physically. When I wake up physically, I put my head again down. You know that moment where you're trying to load fire to recuperate and say, okay, let me get up. I have one more meeting before I come. It's partly why I delayed. Partly. There's another reason, but partly why I delayed to come. And... Um, the Spirit put me back again, and this time, <laughs> he told me, there is that first vision you had, yes, that someone is for another day. Now let me tell you what is going to be preached this evening. Now something started to play in my spirit, and I opened somewhere I have not shared in the direction I'm going to share tonight. And... Um, he gave me the scriptures to read. He told me exactly what to share in my spirit. So it's like I'm sharing, it. I'm, I'm, leave, I'm relieving what has already happened. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a very humbling place because that only means that this time right now was fitted in eternity. It had to take place with every man who is listening to me. And believe me, no man is going to leave until I finish. I promise you, no man. 
um, so that's my that's where I came from to share what I'm going to share tonight um, so in this second vision I am carried to the service now and I'm going to share um, after that experience I get up and then start to do other things like I said I delayed one more meeting that I'm supposed to attend to early deliberately because I've not finished downloading tonight's service. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I had to finish tonight's service. Um, sometimes I want to get people and take them certain places and make them see how God deals with ministry, right? Um, I'll give you an example. There's something one day I'll teach very soon. You know when the Bible says that the Lord shall do nothing except he reveal it to his holy prophets. You understand? They were there for prophets, he's his men, right? There are many parts in the scriptures that say prophets that don't necessarily mean the office of the prophet. Some of them simply mean a man of God, right? Some of them, they don't just mean the office of the prophet. Some of them extend past just the office of the prophet. But when the Bible says, surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophet. Some people don't know the difference between the Lord's doing and the devil's doing. Um, there are things a man of God might not see might not not will not might not because they are the working of the devil it's like when the woman a shunammite woman comes to elisha and she goes on his feet elisha says the lord has hid this from me why did he say the lord has hid this from me it is because the death of that child was not the working of the lord I don't know that you're, you're getting where I'm coming from. When the Bible says the Lord will not do anything except he reveal his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Um, God so much loves to reveal to us what he is doing more than what the devil is doing. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. Um, I might not know what the devil will do to you next week, but I surely know what God is going to do in your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I choose to minister above that sword. Sometimes I can see things happening in people's lives. You've been in meetings where I see, receive words of knowledge of this person, bewitched your mother, this or this is happening in your spirit. And sometimes I can pick a full, full detail of say, I can know that this person's mother is the one who involved them in witchcraft. But then I realize in my spirit that this person is too immature to take it that after that they are going to attack their mother and ask them why did you send me to which doctor. So sometimes the word of wisdom there for a man of the spirit is let me not give them the detail of the mother. Let me deal with that particular issue and leave love to reign. Because even for the mother the Lord willeth that she not perish. At least sometimes you leave discord in families. You understand? So. When the Bible says that the Lord shall not do nothing save he reveal um, his secrets unto his servants. I'll preach that one day. I need like an hour to explain that. When the Bible says that the Lord will do nothing save he reveal his secrets unto his servants. Some people don't know the difference between what the Lord wants to do and what the devil is doing. That's why I said we might not be as knowledgeable as what the devil is doing. But we'll surely know what God wants to do. Tonight, I want to tell you something about what God is planning to do. So, in this evening, I received two summons, right? One is for the future, it was in my spirit. I wake up, and then again, I'm carried in the spirit in a trance, and then I'm carried again to this meeting, and it tells me exactly what is going to transpire, what I'm going to preach, and how I'm going to preach it. Because this day was recorded in eternity, that certain things had to happen. Many times I have those experiences and I don't share them because a man can have too much with God that he no longer knows what to say because he fears either he will be misunderstood or the people to whom he repeats too much with might take light the things he's sharing. I don't know that I'm making sense. 
But when I tell you that many of these things that I see, the total sum of my ministry is experiences in, this, in God. Uh, even in those experiences, I want to seek out what is revelation. Because glassy seas are beautiful and cherubims on different sides. But I can be amazed at the beauty of His holiness, which is a beautiful thing, and leave the place of inquiring in His courts. It says, one thing that I long for and one thing that I seek is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Because it's beautiful to see. But it says, forever uh, beholding His beauty, which is a beautiful place, but many people stay there. But the Bible says, and to inquire in His courts. Because it's not useful for me to just know God and see the beauty of the things of the Spirit, but not be able to inquire what is necessary for purpose on the earth. He did not take Isaiah in the spirit just to see glassy seas. He sneaked him in the meeting to know what God is planning to do. Whom shall we send? And immediately when the man says, send me, Lord, the Bible says God uh, sends a man. It doesn't mean Isaiah was not called. It only means he was not yet commissioned. There's a difference between the calling of God and the commissioning of God. Some people think that because they are called, they are commissioned. From an apostolic angle, I can even assure you, there are many pastors in Uganda who are serving God because they are called, but not because they are commissioned. It is sad, but it is true. Praise the Lord Jesus. That is why I had to serve to my last day to be commissioned by a man of God, because I knew the extending arm of God through commissioning, not just the usual. I mean, you might not have that man in your life, but if he had not come by my way, the place of commissioning was still still and had needed that place. Uh, David needed Samuel to pour oil on his head. Praise God. But these are two different destinies. I don't know if I'm making sense. So, sometimes my spirit is heavy, both because the message becomes a burden. And um, sometimes we communicate things without explaining so much the intensity of their consequences because we don't want to explain that intensity and men misunderstand God for the intensity of the consequences but not the simplicity that is with him for men to simply accept that engrafted word which is able to make to, to, to serve them and give them an inheritance amongst them which are sanctified that sanctification is not just the walking out of sin. That's a lower understanding. The deeper place of this sin is a place of where men have been indifferent to faith because that which is not done in faith is sin. That sanctification um, cleanses your eyes of the spirit. And when it cleanses your eyes, the eyes of perception are cleansed you will realize that all things are infinite. Um, all things are infinite. Uh, even in their temporary sense, they speak of a far infinite understanding of things because they hail from the eternal plane and then come and carry their manifestation to the physical world. It's a very confusing experience when you start walking in the spirit to know exactly what God is doing. Again, I repeat, it is different from going to the enemy's camp to pick details of what the devil is doing in a man's life, which is okay. But it's another experience when you go in to know exactly what God does or what he's up to. Praise God. So when the Bible says that the Lord will not do a thing except he reveal it to his holy prophets, his men of God, Prophets meaning men of God, right? Messengers of the Spirit things. It's not just the officer. Um, some sermons we preach are, are not clearly understood because some people don't see the line in which God wants to do certain things. They see the line of the problems they have present, which eternally a past tense because if you lost your job how far did you lose it how many months ago weeks if you have not yet paid rent that's past tense you understand 
if you if you believe in God for a wife for a child, that's already past tense. You oh, it it already took place in the earthly timing. What are the things ahead? Praise the Lord. What are the things to come? I have a sermon one day on that. Please remind me. Um, I'll explain. I want to call it something like the completion of the person of God. Right? You'll understand it one day. You'll know where I'm coming from. Right? Oh, there's something to deep in there, to dig deep, deep in there. So, uh, if I don't see what the devil has done, don't blame me. But I'll surely see what God is up to, and and that's why I love to to build ministry from. I'm comfortable. Um, <laughs> Jesus raised only twelve men. Eh? Twelve. The rest were followers. Eh? Those 12 are the reason why the church has continued. Sometimes we might not, we might minister to thousands, but we might not pass the fullness of those things to all the thousands. Because some of them simply want food. You understand what I'm saying? Um, they simply want bread. Some come to our meetings because they want bread. Praise God. They just want bread. And, and you give them bread. Um, two fish and five loaves of bread. But you remember the time when Jesus gets to the place of crucifixion towards his end of life. Almost every man who he ministered to left. Except these twelve. And then he asks them, are you also? going to leave. This is the Son of God. And they tell him, for where do we go? For we fear the words of life. When God gives you those men, even if they are 12, if they can receive life, like he has said, that life multiplies and you're sure for the generation to come. Um, I want to live a long life. I don't plan to die young. But I also don't fear to go to heaven any day. You understand? Eh? I've seen a lot in God that makes this world so so small you understand I've seen a lot in God that makes this the things of this world so shallow you see how men of God fight each other compete with each other speak evil about each other ministers comparing themselves with each other God help us. Somebody say amen. One day some of these things, or all of these things, are going to be history. Um, we'll go. And it's going to get a day where it won't matter. Many things you call matter, won't matter one day. Um, but there is one thing God knows in my heart that... I would die a very disappointed man if I don't finish what is inside my spirit. Praise God. It's too much. It's too much. Um, so, it won't happen because he can't let it happen. He knows even in heaven we won't fight. <laughs> Praise God. He can't let it happen. He would not have created that in my spirit and not had a mind to to finish it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, the few seconds you've spent here, or minutes, they've already changed a lot. Eh? Um, 
your time on the earth. For some of you either your time has reduced. You understand what I'm saying? For some of you your time has increased. Depending on what which plane you play, you see these things. Huh? Um, Paul used to speak of places where he's in tears for the church. And until you're apostolic by calling, not just title. By the way, there are people who are apostles and they are not. Some of these people, I wish they really asked God or were willing to hear from men of God. They would know they are not. They were just called by us or any other person who wanted to respect them. But like there are people who are not prophets that you are not pastors etc um because some people are so with titles but many people don't understand the responsibility of those titles uh, but my heart bleeds so much when we have availed eternal things and certain men treat them as normal things eh? and we are also dealing with men who think they are giving pulse what a pulse yet they are simply distributing stone eh? and we are dealing with an indifferent generation that doesn't separate pulse and stone anymore because they've been seared for so long their consciences uh, that feeble part in them has died and Sometimes I also fear that judgment is heavier for the things you sat under if you don't produce the results of those things. It's like sometimes I look at my own and I wonder, with all this they know, they can't even raise 10 people in a small project and church, 10, and follow them through with all they know. You understand what I'm saying? With all they know, they can't. One day when we go to account the real experience of what it means for the least among them to raise a thousand and uh, a small one, a nation, the greatest beyond nations, you'll know the difference between awakening revivals and uh, no more currencies of the operation of the Holy Spirit. But sometimes I go to my bed and I weep. But I weep because some people we minister to don't have the understanding and have not picked the things that we're sharing. Um, we are so blessed to hear these things in our day. And I know men who would pay millions of shillings to just come and listen to these things. Um, Usually revivals, awakenings, movements, they are appreciated after men are long gone. There are some people right now who hear me and they don't understand me, but one day their children will hear me and they will say, how could this man have lived in this generation? Like many of you are. How could some of you have lived? You see, I'm not boasting. Eh? I'm not boasting. I know what God called me to be on the earth and I know I'm a gift this generation I know it I'm not boasting don't get me wrong I know exactly the mandate he has placed upon me it takes too much humility to to stay with with a certain consciousness um, there are things I've seen in the spirit that if I start to narrate them I'll be so boastful eh? but a couple of years ago, I had a visitation of God and he appeared and he took me to the end of, you know, the beginning, life as it was. I traveled through that and the place of the church and the ministry. And he started to show me particular individuals that existed way before us. And um, 
I saw the men who are carrying the torch and the time many of them are going to go. And um, each meeting some of these men have had, there are many men who have had impact on me, but in, on the face of the earth, there are two men who have had the biggest part of my life. And those men, I don't mention them, not because I don't want to. But um, if I told them to you, you'd look for the wrong, for, you'd look for, if you went to search them out to ask why, you, you would go for the wrong reasons and you'll ask the wrong questions and you'll receive um, different answers of them. Eh? So then not mentioning them really is protecting them from, from people who don't know the place of how they've impacted me. But if the Lord ever gives me the grace to meet them in faith, that's the day either you will know or they will know. Praise God. That's my secret between me and God. And I saw the passing of those men and I knew the responsibility we had for the next generation. Um, I can only add to your ministry. I can't subtract from it. The Lord knows that. Um, I can only add um, there are things I don't minister in some ministries because some want fish and bread. They, they don't want life. So it becomes so. so I, some I give fish and bread. Um, but when you carry a burden as a man of God, you understand the seriousness of some of these things. Let me tell you something many of you are never going to believe. Some of you think you're serious with God, but you're not. And um, some of you think you submitted to me, but you're not. Some of you think you're serving in Fanero, but you're not. Some of you think you know me, but you don't. Praise God. And um, what is bread and fish? good but it's only for a day and tomorrow you'll hunger for bread and fish praise God what is life is eternal you understand what I'm saying in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 uh, the Bible says now the big things which we have spoken Paul says this is the sum it's the total okay if you've not understood the Bible and there are many things we've said to you and you've not understood anyone, any of them. If you want to know the sum of these things, this is the sum. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Some of you might not understand that statement. Such a high priest. Such a high priest, such a high priest, who, which is set on the right hand on the throne of God of His Majesty. If I had the opportunity to just preach that scripture, only that verse, it would take me probably three hours. But I'll touch it one day. There's something for tonight. Go to the second verse. And this high priest, this is where I wanted to touch. The Bible says he is a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord preached and not man. He is the minister of the sanctuary. Next verse. Um, For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. Praise God. Now, 
that I will con that's for another day. But this is what I wanted to share with you. This Jesus, if, if, if you have not understood the total sum of things which we minister, this is the total sum. That we have such a high priest which is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. And this Jesus, the Bible says, is the minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which is what the lord pitched and not man firstly this tabernacle the lord pitched himself and when he pitched that tabernacle uh, jesus was appointed the minister of that sanctuary when a man takes that place of ministry and he's a minister but without understanding the minister you understand what I'm saying that is the beginning of understanding grace the message when I stand to preach Jesus right now is ministering because he's the minister in the Old Testament priests ministered in the New Testament dispensation, Jesus is the minister of that sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which God pitched and not man. Um, it's one thing when your ministry is built by you, it's another when God has built it. I've seen men of God who have built ministries, not God. They can thrive for a time but they always hit shipwreck. Some people have a deception that because the man built, the ministry won't thrive. It can grow for a time, but only for a time. And uh, because of the gift, anything can grow it for a time, but there are things later that fail it. Because, uh, you know, when the Bible says that nothing, no plant which was uh, planted or nothing built, uh, except that which was built of the Lord shall stand. It means that there is a given time period of grace where it can stand even though it's not planted of the Lord. But then he says there is nothing planted which is not planted of the Lord shall not be uprooted. That's powerful. In other words, it can plant and be planted and it can grow. You understand what I'm saying? It can grow. But then a time comes where because it's not planted by God, the Bible says it is plucked. Praise the Lord. That's the scripture. No plant. Nothing planted by God. If it was planted by if it was not planted by God, it will not be uprooted. That means anything planted by God is eternal. But that which is planted by man is only temporal. Um, some or many people uh, here don't know the difference in what it means to be planted in the house of the Lord. Because they flourish some who are not planted and some who are planted flourish too and the planted and unplanted all flourish alike and sometimes there's a deception and thought that because there's a flourishing therefore there's a planting um, the total sum of things eh, seems too simple but if you enter it you realize that it's more intricate. It has deeper things um, than what meets the eye. Mm. The foundation of God has a seal and it stands sure on this seal that the Lord knoweth his own. Um, some of you might not understand because Sometimes the simplest things are the most complicated because we assume that because we've seen or read them many times, they are simple. Um, but they are deeper than you think. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. They're just more emphasized because every other day they cast different lights of knowledge and understanding. This Jesus Christ, the total sum of the things we've spoken of, if you have not understood the Bible, he's saying from beginning to the end, if you have not understood the Bible, understand this one sentence, that Jesus is the minister of the sanctuary and the true tabernacle which was built 
by God and not by man, which the Lord himself preached. Praise God. Eternally, for example, Fanero, Fanero began in 2014, but it was preached before 2014. Then you put down the difference between being preached and launching out in the times of men. Um, the beginning of finding yourself eh, goes back to understanding what was preordained by God. Because that preordination gives clarity to the call, gives you the grace, the indemnable grace of justification and the glorification. The Bible says, for whom he foreknew, he what? Predestinate, right? He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. And he continues to say that whosoever he predestinated, he what? He also uh, called. And for whom he also called, he also justified. And for whom he justified, he also glorified. Glory follows a certain justification, follows a certain calling, follows a certain predestination. Many people begin from, they come to my office and they ask me, Apostle, what did God call me to do? And sometimes I want to tell them, you're asking me the second question. But many of them, I, I don't go there because they will ask me more. And I'll need to explain myself much. So some of them I tell them, okay, you know what? Why don't you ignore a bit the calling and begin with what you can do? What can you do? Can you sing? Okay, go in the choir. Uh, can you, do you have power here? Arrange chairs. Uh, because, yes, because some of them are so deceived by the platform here. They are so deceived by the altar. You understand what I'm saying? They are so deceived by the altar. Um, and God sometimes I feel holds us very accountable and will hold us accountable for appointing men on altars they understood not. For looking so much on appointing them on the altars without giving them deeper understanding of why they are behind that altar. One time I was speaking to my worship team and I gave them an example. I told them if I stand before 5,000 people, for example, eh, there is a grace operating on my life to stand before those 5,000 or 10,000 people. There is a deception the person who is backing me up has. They think that because they can sing, they have the right to stand behind that altar because they're in the choir. That is why Sinashe can come in Namboli and have 15,000 people coming to just hear Sinashe worship because she understood the distinction of the responsibility of a worshiper beyond the voice and the good harmony, the soprano and the whatever. I don't know if that making sense. Um, it was a big deception for for, for the person who thought that because I am... You see, when you stand before Fanero, you're playing before thousands of people. God expects a certain place in your spirit for that organ to minister to 5,000 people. If you don't go beyond the gift and the ability to play the piano, you are going to be held in a certain place. That is why some men have been taken off the altar from where they serve. And for whatever reason they have, many of them, 99.99% or 100%, many of them, it, it, is, it is the devil which has consumed them uh, because they, were point, they, they stood on that altar, novice. Eh? And the Bible says, appoint not a novice list out of pride, he destroy himself. Some, when you go in the back end, many of them have a certain pride to them, and some, um, the Lord himself took them away and told them, no, you, you, you've you, not yet reached a certain place to minister to these people, even if you're backing up, um, even if you're ushering. 
there's a certain level of maturity you must have. Uh, even if you are in administration, some of you think that because you handle money, you count, you collect money, you just catch people and say, what has the Spirit got to do with you? It's because you have not understood the minister of the sanctuary. You're just focusing on what you want to do for that minister, not what he's doing through you. Um, my heart is heavy when I say such things because there are even people who don't serve and they don't even know um, that some are, have actually run out of time but they don't even know that they're out of time because the devil has has been successful so far in a number of people to deceive them to not understand exactly uh, the rules of that sanctuary what Paul calls the order of worship eh? Some people think order of worship is putting everything in a certain order. Who comes in worship first, who leads the program. But, but the spirit world, like I tell people, has a certain order. And rewards come to the faithfulness of that order of the spirit. The devil is copying it. That's why you hear things of the new world order. That's really the devil trying to copy. He, he It was illuminated to his spirit uh, that, 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 that there is an order. God has an order of things. And... Um, Many many of our saints are walking out of order. They don't even understand uh, what they do. That's why some of you are going to grow up the ranks very quickly. Some of you are going to stay the same. Uh, to whom much is given, much is required. I worry what comes heavy on a man as God continues to fill you with this much that you know. And he says, woe unto you. Woe unto you. For if the deeds that were done in thee were done in Gomorrah and Sodom, the Bible says, up to today, Sodom would still be alive. I don't know whether some of you understand how serious this is. He told them, woe unto you. He says, Capernaum, thou art exalted and shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Sodom would have remained up to this day. It would have its name. Now, if you go in the literal sense of Sodom, you realize it's not just the name of the place. There's a spirit. You understand what I'm saying? It would have remained. That means with how much evil they had, God would have kept it around. But now you're talking to men of Copenhagen. They don't even understand. Today, there was a time the church was, was suffering from lack of knowledge. Now we're in a dispensation where the church is struggling with both. In one sphere of the spirit, many are dying for a lack of knowledge. And in another sphere, many are dying for a lack of of knowledge of the knowledge they have I don't know if I'm making sense some of you are now in the place where you lack knowledge because you don't know what you know I don't know if that makes sense you don't know what you know you don't know who you are that's why you can send some Oh, I'm stuck, oh, Apostle. Some of you don't know who you are. You just don't know who you are. You just don't know who you are. You don't know what you know. In other words, you've been pumped with too much, but what you have been pumped with, you also don't know it. Praise God. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like tying a, uh, bombs on a man, and he wakes up and he doesn't know that he has bombs on him. And then he starts throwing himself around not knowing that these are explosives. Because maybe he doesn't know what bombs are. One time I went to a saloon and there was this guy from South Sudan, his parent, his son had brought him to the saloon. It was his first time to, to sit on a, on a massaging chair. And the, the chair was massaging him. But the first time they put him there, he turned and said, looking behind the chair. Said looking, this old man said, looking behind the chair vehemently. So the son asks him, hey, what's happening? He says, some guy is punching me. <laughs> so the guy translates for us and says, my father is saying somebody is punching him in the back. Because he didn't know that a chair can do that. Do you understand? Yet he was in the experience of that 
massage. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, some of you don't know what is happening in our time and our lives. I'm almost finishing. I don't know that you expect me to take this direction, but don't worry. What I'm trying to tell us here is that um, manifestation, the conference, eh? it was designed by God and ordained for you to know the total sum of all things that the minister of this sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord preached and not man is that man Jesus. Um, you have the choice to pattern your life in understanding how to flow with this minister or how to look at yourself simply as a minister ministering unto this minister <laughs> i don't know if you understand what i'm saying some people have patterned lives over ministering to god and others have patterned their lives uh, following after and yielding to the minister of 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 of, of the of the of, of, of the what give me the the the, the, the amplified of that he says, now the thing, the main point of what we're trying to say is that we have such a high priest, one who is sitting in the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And he says, an, official, an officiating priest, a minister, the Bible says, in the holy places and in the true tabernacle, which is not erected by man, but by the Lord. Now, the Amplified says he's a minister in the holy places. Do you understand what I'm saying? But many people don't understand that his primary ministry is not through you but to you did you get it his primary ministry is not through you but to you it doesn't mean that he didn't work through you but he didn't want to work through you when he was not worked in you least you run this race in vain when paul says i beat my flesh to subjection it is a place where he wants his flesh to yield to the spirit of god his soul to yield to the spirit operating in him because the total sum of our qualifications of God begins when we speak the things which Christ has wrought in us to make the Gentiles obedient in word and deed. When the Bible says that in your day thine people shall be willing, in that day of power, thy people shall be willing, in thy day of power, thy people shall be willing. People cannot will when I'm functioning in just the grace of the gift people can only will when these things are wrought in me it's the only way the grace is extended to cause the gentiles obedient in word and deed where people obey in word and people obey in deed and that is why the primary prayer of every minister is god wrought in me but many people primarily their prayer is use me i don't really understand what i'm saying Many people are saying, God, use me. Yet many ministers are supposed to tell God, route in me. I don't know the end of the difference. Let me give you an example. And my ministry, for example, is the total sum of the things God has done in me. I don't pray to God to use me. I, that's not a prayer I've made to God. Every time I'm in the presence of God, I simply tell him, work in me. He says, in that day, I work in you, I work. <laughs> but if you tell it, a man shall believe, shall not believe. One time I was carried in a certain place. The same, I think, my man of the spirit went one time. He saw things. And for the first time, his problem was, God, who shall believe our report? Not that the defense of that gospel and the confirmation of that gospel is not available. But some things, even if they are defended and confirmed by demonstration of power, some things are beyond the demonstration of the spirit to believe. That is why God would separate water for the children of Israel and they cross that river and still worship molten graven images yet the water parted before them men saw jesus raising Jairus' daughter opening blind eyes and raising the dead and in his persecution they still walked away 
and some men of God I hear say no it's not about the miracles uh, and, and, and some use that to water down the miracles yet they also forget that he still did the miracles anyway but For Moses to esteem Christ's greater riches because he had respect unto the recompense. How many things had Moses seen Jesus do? Huh? What did Moses see to refuse to be called the son of the daughter of Pharaoh? He says, by faith, by faith, when he was come to years, that's maturity, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the children of God that to, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for what? For a season, esteeming, he says, the reproach of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. The Bible says, for he had respect unto the recompense. What expectation and respect of recompense did Moses have? How many stories had he heard about God? He was raised an Egyptian in their language and, and culture. He didn't know much about the Jew God, the God of the Jews. But he beheld a Christ, and that Christ was deeper than miracles. He beheld a Christ that had something way deeper than just these signs and wonders. Um, there are many people who come to us because they want to be healed, they're tired, their marriages are failing. And sometimes my tears are, what if all these things are given? What will bring these people back in the presence of God? Sometimes we've seen movements and thousands of people thronging meetings. They're impacted but they're not affected. They are touched but they're not revived. They, they are because the Bible says revive us and we shall what? What does the Bible say when God revives us? What, what happens? And we shall what? We shall turn to you. You understand what I'm saying? Revive us God. And we shall seek you. We shall turn to you. We shall respond to you. We shall walk up to you. Because that's the true experience of revival. Did you understand what I'm saying? But how many have been healed and they stayed? How many have been delivered and they stayed? How many have sat in the meetings and they stayed the same? What did Moses see to refuse to be called the son of the daughter of Pharaoh? That you have not seen. You have seen the lamb walk. You have seen cancers heal. You have seen deaf ears open. You have seen finances. You've seen people delivered. You've seen demons screaming out of men. And many of you still don't see and believe enough. Many of you don't even have respect unto the recompense. If the work which was done in you was done in Sodom, it would still have been alive. What is the Church of Christ suffering from? The Church of Christ is suffering from too much knowledge in a certain place because it's available you see the children of God they were dying in the wilderness and one time they didn't know that they were dying but they were dying in the wilderness and they got tired and they said we're tired every day we're eating manna we're eating manna every day we're eating manna and you think through this and realize actually they're disturbed because they're eating the same food but there's an appreciation that has run out of their lips. There's a forgetfulness. And sometimes this forgetfulness is that they are not digging in the wilderness. They're not digging. Praise the Lord. They're not what? He says, now our soul is dried away and there is nothing all at all besides this manner before our eyes. There was a time they were so hungry that when manna fell, they were like, my God, we're not going to die. Heavenly food. But then a time came and the manna became too much and they did not understand the transition. Instead of asking for higher places, they blamed the manna. The Bible says that as soon as they reached the end of the wilderness and entered the promised land, 
the Bible says manna stopped to fall from heaven. But when they enter the promised land, you don't see anything falling from heaven. You don't see cows yet he promised them milk. You don't see honey yet he promised you don't see bees yet he promised them honey. And in the land of the promise, honey, milk. Some of you should know what really it is. As, as children desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow therein. And the man of the spirit says, For I ate your word and it was like honey unto my lips. There is something he wanted to give them. And they didn't see cows and they didn't see um, bees. I think that definition of honey was misunderstood. And many died in the promised land. Sometimes my tears are people are playing in the gospel because we give them too much. And yet we can't stop giving because we are mandated by God to release these things. Um, when the East African revival came, you realize the fire that began in Gahini and Rwanda if you go to Rwanda now, you'll see there's a place where Rwanda stepped back. And the reason why they did was because it was in their land. It was simply with them every day. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was simply with them every day. It was with them every day. Every day it was there. Sometimes my worry is we give people too much and we are preaching to them every day. And sometimes my strength and encouragement is that there are two, three, four, five. Who understand? There are people sometimes we move with and they seem like they understand, but they don't. They don't. They think they do, but they don't. But there are a few which appreciate and understand these things. And um, they no longer ask for fish and bread. You understand what I'm saying? Because for them honey and milk are enough. It's the only thing they need uh, for the promise. Some of you, you even struggle to fast because you're so full of the world. You struggle to fast. You struggle to pray. You struggle to attend a meeting. You you can sit in an hour, in two hours in a, in a movie and watch it fully, but it is hard to sit for one hour in the presence of God and just listen to the word of God. Um, he told them that the Queen of the South shall judge you. He He stopped to judge them and gave authority to that woman. Now many people don't understand the consequence and the implication of that spiritually when he says that the Queen of the South shall judge you because she, when she came, the Bible says from the uttermost parts of the earth, the Bible says she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And he says, and behold now greater than Solomon is come. That's why she judges. I saw one time that experience in the spirit and I could see that there are certain people, the Lord, they were, they didn't access certain things. And it's as though they were given legal right to judge the men who accessed them. 
But you see, many of you don't understand what I'm saying because what you're used to is this year you're going to America. I see that you're going to get a man in June. Did he come in June? Yes. And that is beautiful. It's beautiful. It's for children of God. It's our portion and I appreciate it. I honor it. But um, a man of the Old Testament holds the word of God in his bosom for days and the Bible says it was like fire in his bones. Like fire in his bones. Yet it was temporal, holding it from his mouth. And you find a man who has that word in the spirit. It's inside him. And he's not burning. With a need to win souls. With a need to serve God. With a need to avail himself for the gospel. And sometimes I'm like, by what fire are you burning? And which altar are you on? Because the altar I'm on, some people have no right to eat their own. And perhaps that's why many of you are not partakers of the grace given to certain men. You want the product and not the process. <laughs> ah, wow. Sadly for us, our generation, we didn't have many people to teach us. No man taught me the gospel. And sometimes I just, like I told people, sometimes I used to just fall on dead bones of men which passed. And um, for us, we had to begin from somewhere. But for you now, we've given the foundation. You're without excuse. You're without excuse. Some of you don't know. Like I shared it for Nera and I said, five hundred churches closed in the UK and 485 mosques were open. When I hear those things I can't sleep. I can't sleep. Because something gets into my spirit and I feel like tears flowing in my soul and I'm saying, God, what is happening with the church? And there's someone who has had it and they are simply going to carry it as a statistic and go back home. And they're going to say, God, use me. You are so attentive to the call, but you don't understand the predestination. That's the predestination is what Paul speaks of in Philippians 3.12. Not that I've attained, but I seek that I may apprehend that which Christ apprehended me for. Because when a man says, why did you call me? He's seeking to be pointed to the understanding of that predestination in God. Why are you listening to me now? Why are you the one attending this meeting? Why is it that some people have given priority in the things of God and some it's just option? Some it's because they are hungry and they are roaming east to west and north and, 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 and their virgins are fainting because they thirst. Some others it's just an indifferent spirit moving on them. Some reach that well, drunk of that well, ate the spiritual food and drank the spiritual drink but the Lord was not pleased with them because they died in the wilderness they were filled spiritually but they lived around dry places they could not admit outside what was inside um, if you meet a woman who has carried a child for six months and that child died there is a way she feels but this is just a woman what about the thing God has placed inside you? How come many people don't attend to it? How come many people don't even understand this? Uh, the, the Let's pray. Some let's speak in other tongues.
there's something God is pouring on you. I don't have a name for it. But I feel that God is reanimating someone. Somebody open your mouth and speak to God. giving back and I feel for some of you now it is your time God seeks for laborers God seeks for laborers come on speak to God I 
God help somebody. God help somebody. but I'm not able to reach you. But right now in the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit is not far and His hand is not shortened. I release an invitation to your spirit. Power. 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 The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.